What's going on, people? Let's make me small. What's going on? You all see this, right? This is all good. Let's put OBS a little bit off the screen just in case. Let's close my extra Twitch that I have open. How is it in San Francisco? Well, I'm just in my apartment all day, every day. So <laughs> have I increased the amount of ads? No, I have not. I do not run ads at all. Um, so any ads that you see are ads that Twitch is running. I never press the ad button on my channel. You're surprised I'm still playing. Yeah, um, so the thing is the game did about seven hours in, the game did pick up and get more interesting. Um, so if it actually feels worth playing now, which it didn't before. So we'll see. See ads every time you join my channel. I don't know. I am not aware of anything that would make my channel different from anyone else's channel. Um, I can check, maybe during the break, I can check the, uh, you know how all these internet companies just like to add things to your settings screen and set them because they're new to values that you wouldn't want. So we can check to see if that happened for some reason. But, um, you know, classically, um, it shouldn't run any extra ads, certainly, unless I press the add button. Do I think it's a video game future full of potential and worth exploring, or do I think it'll die? Uh, it's worth exploring. It's just designers need to do a better job than they have. All right, let's see if it's still calibrated reasonably, which it may or may not be. Can I even... All right. All right. Let's see what's going on. We are loading, everybody. Okay, where, oh man, the tracking just skipped out hella bad. Okay, we're in a room. There's thingaboppers on the wall. Oh, were those? I don't remember what was happening at all. Okay, there's a bug juice. There's an unlooted room. I don't think this guy is going to, like, wake up and attack me or anything. Why is tracking so bad right now? Yeah, the floor height is way off. I might have to. See, last time we ran room setup, all sorts of bad things happened. So I kind of don't want to. But if I start getting sick, then we will do it. Okay, so that has locked me in, of course. Oh shit. I don't like all this scripted stuff that Valve does, dude. It does not feel authentic. All right. 
So then... I still haven't gotten the grenade launcher. bug juice machine in here. So I guess the last thing I remember was we were at the zoo. So I guess this is just inside the zoo. Something. Man, the looting in this game is so boring, guys. Wait, did that not land on the floor? I looked away. I hope I didn't get caught up in the pipes. Anyway, we'll see. That seems like a gorilla boss location, doesn't it? No, because there's a... Oh, wait, did I? Oh, that was where I was fighting the bugs. And then I came up in there and saved because I thought it was going to be the end of the level and it wasn't. Okay, gotcha. All right, so there's my bug juice. We're not going to load the bug juice, but we'll get it so we don't forget about it. Someone's going to come through there behind me. Just before we get into it, is everything okay? Can people see the game? I see people adding me. What's going on? Those are old messages. Wait, somebody say something. Are we still online? Yeah, okay, good. Just making sure. I'm very paranoid for good reason, as, as many people know. Things go wrong. Yep. Good. It's just so scripted. Like I don't I don't like it. I should have just had my pistol out for that guy. Waste of ammo. Prison! What now? Wait, Dad, what? It's not a vault. It's a prison. They didn't build it to keep us out. They tried to keep something in. Keep what in? I don't know. I'm not sure if this data part even knows. But they got something trapped in there. Okay, so if it's not a weapon, are we still doing this? The way I see it, whatever's in there doesn't like the combine very much. So we got that in common. True. So? Did I set off a booby trap? Forward? We've come this far. What happened? I say we keep going. And if you find out it's something we really shouldn't mess with, we'll call it off. That's my girl. I'll let you know what I find out. I must have not noticed a grenade booby trap somewhere. All right. Is 
Zoo Park. Do I still have a gas mask on? I don't. I think I'd be able to see it. I don't think those... I just, I would like to keep the gas mask in case I see the gas guys again, but... I don't know. Oh, gas guys. Speak of the devil. Uh, where'd my nade go? I chucked a nade down here. Where'd it go? Should I leave it up there? No. I don't know where it went. Rip. Oh god. Is there a loot up there? Let's find out. I'm gonna risk it. No, nope, didn't see loot. Go. All right. So there's a hole over there. Going into the next room that I can't get into. So that's probably on the other side of the force field. There's this thinger. Yellow cable. Oh yeah, they have to like actually have a live socket, I guess, to start tracing. Am I just supposed to open this? I mean, I'm worried about this. This doesn't seem good to me to mess with, but. Oh, it's a light. It's not a button. They need to get their language down in this game. I am not impressed with that part of this game. Like, dude, my hand is 17 feet away from my in-game hand. Like, can you just give me the flashlight? I mean, I guess this is my clue that this is not anything in the game. <sighs> All right, so. Oh, I guess I can hack this thinger. Okay, let's see what we're going to accidentally open. So that's green cable. Which goes nowhere. Oh, except no, it forks. Oh, I just want to walk around the room, man.
goes to there. Which is also, I guess, a broken dead end that doesn't do anything. Okay. So green cable is not bad to power, I guess is what we're saying. That's the light. That's not bad to power, as far as I know. And there's nothing. All right. So I don't know. I don't know why I care about any of this. There's got to be a different thing, right? So yeah, that was just the light. That was the green cable. And there's nothing else. So like, green cable must do something else. Let's check it. Green cable, boom. Goes up, goes that way, goes that way. Those are the only two. Okay, now it's got sparks shooting out. Which is great, but doesn't help me. And then, oh, that's now, okay. See, they need to get their language straight. Those, when they're closed, they look to me like they're broken and non-operative, but it's actually not broken. It's fine. Okay, so my problem is that thing's going to explode when I go up there. And I don't know what to do about that. Maybe I just go up there and turn it really fast. But, like, I can't even reach that. I have to move... I have to move crates to the right place, I guess. All right? But this one's going to be stuck. So I need to move other crates. From up there, maybe? I don't really see. Oh, I never grabbed that loot box. Oh, come on, bro. That's probably not enough. Let's put it on the side in case we need some in case we need something bigger. Go! Okay, so I clearly cannot get big boxes from beyond this point, which might be why they did that. So it's just these little boxes. So we're just going to stand on a bunch of cardboard boxes and they will somehow support our weight. And that'll be great. <laughs> All right. Except I can't. Hmm. Maybe I just take the damage because those aren't super big. I don't know. Oh, I could, if we had the, the glowy grenades, we could knock them out, right? But I don't know where any of those are except way, way back. I don't know if we can get all the way back. 
The last one of those that I remember is the little wooden footbridge. Maybe we can find one over here. And what's the deal with that? Certainly don't see glowy grenades. Also, it would be hard to knock them out with glowy grenades because you can't like stick them to anything and those are on the roof. So like, that's not gonna work. I'm just gonna take the damage, I guess, or else try to, we'll try to do it fast. I just don't know that I have very much time. Okay, I can't, I can't stand on these cardboard boxes. So I might as well get rid of them. Frickin' room! Alright. So... I mean, I still can't reach that, can I? Like, how... Let me just see. We're gonna not be scared. We can go straight there. No, we can't go straight there. Alright. I didn't have my thing out. Um, so... I mean, maybe I put the cardboard boxes on the bottom and put this on top, which makes no sense. Because if I can't stand on them, then certainly a very heavy crate cannot be on them. But you know what? This is a Half-Life game, so whatever. Yeah, okay, so it, it decides that I can't go somehow. There's some heuristic. Can I go on this? No. Welcome to video games. I mean, I could like hold one to try to block me from the goo. Is there anything better for that? So I could like grab a hat. I'm trying to wear the hat. Oh, I can. Bro. I'm wearing a hat. Check me out. Can I open this? Okay. Maybe this will help. I'll get my hat. And I'll... Ugh, come on. I'll get my shield. This is my Captain America shield. Except... Alright. Just try it. Oh, God. See, you just try to be smart and you get punished. What is going on with the feet in this game, dude? Whoever did the feet does not pass my game design class. Now I'm stuck in the corner of the room. Let's get out of the corner of the room. I don't think this box is going to help, but... That didn't help at all. Okay. I think it just wanted me to do it fast.
Okay, blue cable is live. I mean, how much fumbling do you want me to frickin' do? The good thing is I left the bug juice out here. Right? So, we can go bug juice up. Oh, it won't. I mean, I put the hat on. I don't know what else you want me to do. Okay, so blue cable is now live probably goes somewhere it goes into the ceiling tiles and then maybe into this room is that the blue cable no that's a that's a hangy dude so much tracking loss um Blue cable, it just disappears up there. Oh. Okay, well, um, you know, I don't, uh, I don't know. It probably goes into this room somewhere. I don't really know how that helps me. I mean, there's that thing around the wall, but I can't operate that from this far away, even if I could power it. And that's on yellow cable. Um, I mean, maybe blue cable is the wrong thing. Maybe I can dial that some other way. I don't think so, though. All right. Like that goes to blue cable. There's nothing in these directions. Nothing in these directions. Yeah. No. All right. So it's blue cable. That's kind of weird. Why is there that circuitry in the wall if it doesn't go anywhere? But it's a first person shooter puzzle. So what do you want? Oh, it goes down the wall here. It's going behind. Blue cable is going behind this giant slobber thing. All right. Oh, and then here, what? I'm blind. Wait, what? I'm blind. I am blind. Okay. That was great. So now it's going through big, big cable. Which either goes back somewhere, which we might want later, or to here, which we might want now. Let's go see what this might be, though. Right, this cable, thick gray cable, uh, probably can't pick that up anywhere. That's probably just an excuse cable. All right, All right well, we'll throw it. We'll see if something scripted happens when we do this. Knew it. All right. Good thing I had that extra explosive there to almost kill me again. Every time I try to use the barrels without fail, it's a problem. 
All right. See, that was cute. That was cute. I wish it gave me more inventory. I would take a little lion figure. Oh, little lion. Wait, that's not a lion, that's a tiger. Don't be sad. Whoa! That didn't seem like he was close enough to hit me, but alright. Oh! took a bit of a hit there. I kind of don't want to walk all the way back out to the heel station zebra. Dude, the game is starting to give me shotgun shells, which is great. <sighs> 17 shots. Come on. into that. That's dangerous. Okay. Let me guess. It wants... This is the thicky gray cable from before. Probably. Maybe. So in order to throw this, I need to go back and switch that the other way. That's my theory. We'll see if that's true. If I were them, I would have put a stripe on it or something to make it more memorable, if that's the actual puzzle. Oh, that actually closes this. So maybe that's not what it is. Or maybe it is, and then I have to figure it out. Sure seems like it might be that cable, but... Um, and I don't really have a reason to believe that because it just goes along with those cables into over there. 
You know, it's probably connected to something else. Let me just go see. I don't freaking know, dude. Well, let's see if we can see it from the other side. So we want that cable. And it just kind of goes like that's going into one of these jail cell things. It's like not even unless it's a different one. Like, I don't know. It disappears behind some stuff. So and there must be another way into that room, though, from from over there. Because it's not from there. So those, those cables go like... I mean, I probably just can't get in. Let's go heal since we're out here. Because screw it. Oh. Buddy. Can't miss that. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so like... Hmm. So we're gonna... Go back over there, I guess. I mean, it kind of seems to me kind of seems to me like I would be turning the power to that gray cable. But then again, the other day or yesterday, it seemed to me like I would be solving a multicolor pipe puzzle because that sure seemed to be like what the game was telling me and it really wasn't. Okay. So here, oh, well, I probably just need to do this, right? Because that's how this freaking game works sometimes. So I need to enable this socket, maybe. Okay, to enable that socket, I just, oh God, guys, tell me where that, I mean, maybe that's just going through the wall. So there's red cable. That's my new, new idea. Before we leave to go look for red cable, like why can't I just freaking scan this, guys? Okay, red cable. Red cable goes into the wall on the near side of this giant hole. There's gotta be something behind these boxes, right? Come on, bro. How, how, how is there not? They're all boxes of little trinkets. If here, go home. No more animals. Okay. <coughs> Whoops. <coughs> Wait. I can't even see it from here. The finger is not helping. There's a red cable. I don't know, guys. Like, what? Like, this is definite C minus territory that I'm in now. Okay, so it's kind of like that side of that thing is hidden, and I don't see any other kind of red cable situation. Um, so I don't know, rip, go play another game now, All right? Like, I like puzzles when they're good. <laughs> okay, this room I'm kind of ignoring, but I don't, I don't see anything I can do with it. 
I don't see any colored cables. I just see, it looks like a cool picture of tentacle monsters that I'll have to fight later. I think that's what that is. So, you know, so back here, we've got two things. We've got gray cable, we've got red cable. Red cable goes nowhere that I can tell. I mean, I'm sure it's important, but like, I don't, I don't freaking know. I don't know, guys. Like, it won't let me scan these things. I don't know what either of these cables is for. I don't know how I'm supposed to know what either of these cables is for. Someone shows up in my company and says, I designed that that one room in Half-Life Alex, and they have that on their resume. I'll be like, let me recommend you some other companies where you might work. Okay, now what's weird is this is sparking. Sparking in the cables outside was an indicator that power was going through them. So this supposedly has power going through it, so why can't I freaking scan it with my dude data? Like, Whoever designed this thing, also, I can recommend them some companies to work at that are not mine. Um, okay. I don't know, guys. I mean, I can start looking at other cables. So there's this random cable that's probably just decorative. And I can't turn on my flashlight to look at it anyway because I don't have control over my flashlight. I want your keys so I could just open all the doors. Oh, oh, you can loot stuff from their little Oh no, that's my hand. I thought that was his. I thought he had like a little elbow pocket with a grenade in it, but that was my own hand contorted around in a weird direction. Um, I, yeah, I don't know guys. Let me just go back. So there's basically one degree of freedom that I don't know what to do with, which is, um, just that little dial that closes the door, right? So maybe we turn that and then randomly look at things and try to see what, what the game designer wants us to do, right? So there's, so I could connect this to live power. We could try to trace this cable again, which we couldn't before figure out where it went. Um, which may or may not be the same as that cable. They certainly didn't give us any good indicators. 
or, okay, I, I think the puzzle is you block the door open. You know what? That's what I think the frickin' puzzle is. I think the puzzle is, I mean, I don't know. Like, it's not a very good puzzle, but, uh, you know, this, maybe, right? And the reason it's not a very good puzzle is there's tons of gray wires, and I have no reason to believe that this is the same as the other one. You know, in actual, if you've ever worked on actual electric circuits, right, you have all sorts of ways of identifying wires. There's basic color, but usually that's not even used that much because of color blindness, right? You have single stripe, multiple stripe, whatever. Like, there's ways of identifying cables. Okay, that wasn't the... Rip. Okay, here's what we're going to do. We're just going to be stuck inside there probably. Ready? Okay, let's save. All right. Now watch that not be the cable. Nope. Rip. We now cannot get out. Let me load before it auto saves. Okay, that's a quick save. Auto save. Wait, quick save is when I manually save. Let's take a break and chat because, um, yeah, that's all I can say about this puzzle is let's take a break and chat. How's it going, everybody? Don't spoil it. Don't spoil it. Don't tell me the answer. Don't tell me the answer. Yeah, no hints. I'm trying to play the game as God intended. Write and demand that they change the game so you can just go through the door. <laughs> I mean, you know, this is one of those puzzles where it'll be like, okay, so it's quite possible, for example, that there's another plug socket that I didn't see that I could use my doohickey on, because I did miss that one that was next to the, the smoke spitting blob for a while. It's quite possible there's more of those somewhere that I just didn't see. But if it's good puzzle design, then you would expect to be able to trace the cables to those, right? You should be able to look at the thing that you're trying to activate, like that little red pull switch, right? And follow the cable back to the thing. That would be like good design. And I don't seem to be able to do that. I also don't understand why, like, it seems like electricity is on in that cable because it's sparking. So, like, why can't I pull the thing unless I need to de-spark it to pull the thing? And since when did that ever make any sense? Like, 
shouldn't it tell me? Shouldn't it like spark? Look, I literally have no idea. I'm just like randomly thinking of things. Um, if this, okay, and, and this is one of these things where, where feeling in good hands matters, right? So like, I've just automatically concluded it's a crappy puzzle simply because most of the puzzles in this game are not good. If most of the puzzles in the game had been good, I would trust the game and I would be like, oh, this is actually a good puzzle and I am stumped on it, which is a nice experience to have. Like if you like puzzle games and you're like, ah, oh, this is a hard puzzle. Hmm. Interesting. Right. But after that frickin', you know, whatever you call it, like lifter, lifter car fiasco, where the solution was throw a random object at it. Oh, no, it wasn't throw a random object at it. It was the buttons press, but it only counts if your hand is on the back of the thing and you can press it for a certain amount of time. And there's no indicator of that. Like after that, I have no faith in, in the puzzles in the game. And so... My brain says the probability is that this is just a terrible puzzle and that it's not really my fault. <laughs> but that might be wrong. I mean, it might, you know, I might go back and work on it more and realize, oh, it's actually a good puzzle. No, it's not because of one issue that I don't trust the game. It's that the game has had puzzle after puzzle and they're all bad, right? I don't remember any puzzle in the game that was good, like ever, including all the little holograms and all that stuff. That's why I don't have faith in the game. Like if it was mostly strong in that department with like, you know, one or two flubs, it's like, okay, you know, that's, that's fine. I either, I still have faith in the game. Um, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's when it's consistent. <laughs> How do I think this compares to Half-Life 2 in the puzzle department? So the problem is I played Half-Life 2 so long ago that I don't remember. And also standards for puzzles were very different in 2003. Um, so... Both of those things being the case, I really cannot attempt a comparison. Is there a clear line between intended difficulty and bad design that makes a puzzle unduly hard? Okay, so the thing that makes a puzzle really hard, and this is pretty much universal, all right? The thing that makes a puzzle solvable is if a player can get traction. Like even if they're pretty much stumped, right? As long as they can look at the puzzle and have one or two things that seem definitely relevant to investigate and think about why it's there, um, then they can work on those things. And as long as those aren't red herrings, they can make progress in the puzzle, right? So in this example, that would be things like the different colored cables, right? Or, um, well, mainly the different colored cables, but also, you know, if there were different pathways that the little multi-tool thing went on and I was like, why does that go there? So, um, yeah. Like, the problem is when there's a game like this where there's just tons of variables, then um, you don't know what to think about. And there's like lots of things in the environment to look at, and most of it is decorative, but some of it isn't. That's actually bad design because you want people to be able to identify the things that are relevant. So, you know, somebody who I timed out and may ban 
if he doesn't stop saying things about how to solve the game. Um, said I'm missing things in the environment, and it's like okay, maybe. Um, we'll see when I figure out what the things are that I was missing, but um, that is bad design. Like if you have if you have a an environment full of like if wires are relevant, like cables are relevant. Did you see how many freaking cables are in that scene? There's like giant big fat cables in the room and little ones and a bunch of red ones off in the corner. And like there's dozens of them probably, right? And it's just my brain has to filter most of them out. That's bad design in terms of puzzle design because um, you want players to be able to focus in on the relevant details and understand them and identify them and work on those toward a solution, right? So it's such a visually noisy environment. Like there's, you know, there's lots of boxes and there's a lot like tool case and like lots of shelves. And I, I don't even know. There's all these things. Um, you know, it's not, it's not a visually or mentally clean environment. And, and then there's a tension when you're designing games because like, if you want your game to look realistic and look like spooky, then you're gonna clutter the environment and put all this stuff in. Like it's super dramatic to have this, you know, alien space room full of wires. But like if the puzzle's about wires, you shouldn't do that. <laughs> you have to have discipline. So, you know, find other ways to make it look spooky. You know, just have, have alien molds all over the place and then have the relevant cable snaking between them or something, right? It's a place where the person directing, directing the puzzle part of the game has to like put their foot down. At what point does it become too obvious? Well, I mean, here's the thing. If the puzzle is just if the puzzle would be made too obvious by you not making red herrings, it's probably not that good of a puzzle. <laughs> and maybe you shouldn't do it. Right? If like if being if being straightforward about the relevant details of the puzzle destroys the puzzle, you know, well let, let, let me reverse that, right? So puzzles are about something, right? It's not just about the enjoyment that you get when you solve it, but it's like, oh, I understand a particular thing about the game because I solved this puzzle, right? And so if, let's say you had a, a cable following puzzle and it obfuscated the answer by like hiding the cables in between tree roots or like in dark crevices or something and you had to follow them with your flashlight, right? It's like, okay, that might be an interesting experience, right? One time or two times, right? But if the game is, is a lot of that, then it's tedious because you're just asking the player to do the same thing over and over and it's not getting more interesting, right? And so if your puzzle is about obfuscating, I mean, and obfuscating isn't very interesting and it often doesn't feel fair. So, um, it's all just to say that that part of it gets taken care of by, again, whoever's directing the puzzles should make sure that, that the subject matter of the puzzles is interesting, right? And that crazy stuff doesn't happen. Like the fact, the fact that in the normal course of trying to solve this puzzle, I was both able to teleport a crate <laughs> and lock myself on the wrong side of a door, like, eh. That's like not, that, locking myself on the wrong side of that door should be a no ship bug, unless it's actually the intended solution to the puzzle, which I can't imagine, um, but maybe it is. Like that, that bug should have prevented the game from shipping and I don't know why it didn't. Um, maybe they hired a hidden object game designer. Is it not a good language that the hacking wires are completely separate from the environment? No, it's not because because I can't I can't like detect them until I turn them on at the source, right? 
So there could be tons of puzzle solving wires in those walls and I can't see them even if I point the thing at them because I didn't turn on the initial switch at the beginning. That's part of what makes it bad is I can't, I can't explore my environment with the multi-tool. Do I think it's possible to sell a game design document to someone like a screenplay in Hollywood, especially if it's a unique puzzle mechanic? No, don't even bother. That's not how the industry works. Do not bother. You're much better off spending your effort just trying to put together a team to make a game. Do, do not, do not go around trying to sell your design document to people. Do I think I could design an interesting puzzle game around obfuscation? Um, I mean, I sort of did. Like there's a, the, the end section of the witness inside the mountain spoilers, um, is about the medium of the puzzle panel or, or other physical things coming between you and the solution that you're trying to do, like possibly visually obfuscating it and so forth. Now that wasn't a complete game, but it was like an entire section of a game. And, uh, I enjoyed doing it and I thought those puzzles were good. Yeah, it's not much of a spoiler. It's just you can go in the mountain eventually, which you find out. I mean, you, you know that from early in the game, so it's fine. It's not really a spoiler. All right, we'll give it another few minutes. Let me turn on some more lights, and then we'll uh, bash my head against the game some more. It's very weird to me that that door was a physically falling door when this game is full of force fields, right? Like the fact that it was physically falling is what let me go under it and created the weirdness with that crate. Just don't do that in your game. If you're going to have teleport movement, like just don't do it. Do I think a potential plan to save civilization is to use programming to build an OS? No. Um, None of that will help. The only thing that will help is to change uh, how people are educated. Are the witness spoilers over? Yes, they are. There, there weren't really witness spoilers. Yeah, I mean, it's it's not that easy to change how people are educated, but if you start with a small group and then that small group outperforms other people, then people will want what you have, right? And so maybe maybe that's the strat. Okay, we're back on the HMD mic, testing. What do I think of ECS? Uh, I'm not even gonna answer that question. Sorry, I answer it too often. 
I'm sure somebody can link you me talking for an hour about why you shouldn't bother with any of that stuff. All right. Why are my hands, there we go. I guess they take a while to warm up. Resume. All right, so we are here. We're looking through the hole. There's this, so this thing. Okay, now usually when a cable doesn't do anything, there'll either be no line coming off it, like on the bottom here, or it'll go to something obvious. Like sometimes it would go to a light or like a speaker in the Jeff levels. So like this one just goes somewhere. And so I still have the option of, of trying to figure out where that goes, except, you know, game doesn't really seem to want me to do that. Let's see if we can find any more doodads. Right? I mean, this is where we started. That doesn't go anywhere. Can't really see through this force field thing. It's very obviously a med station back there. There's a lot of cables, which again, like I said, that's bad design for this puzzle. Um, I mean, there's some cables back here. Do these matter? Maybe. Maybe not, like... So why is this thing here? I just keep going around this and I'm like, eh, it's not really doing anything. So like maybe if I move this barrel, something will be there. I don't think so. No. Put my hand over my mouth. So this little thing, I think, was just a place for... Ugh, I'm in a wall. This little... Oh, God. It was just a place for a monster to jump out and scare us. Dude, I need to adjust the radius on the zone, maybe. I don't know. Okay. Oh, well, there's yellow cable. Right. So... So there's yellow cable here, which again, this is powered off, I guess is what that means. So the, maybe we should look for yellow cable instead of red cable or gray cable. I don't even remember now if I did that. And the reason that's relevant is like, why else would they put this thing here if it wasn't to block you from yellow cable, right? So. Oh, that's what this... Wait, what? Okay, bad, 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 bad game design. Okay. If this cable had been this cable, I would have just freaking solved it. Like, I... S All right. So now I know what the puzzle is. I do have to... I do have a situation where I have to power this, and that's going to close that door. Okay, this is weird. Okay, so the reason I didn't even bother with this before is a lot of the time, 
This is super inconsistent, right? A lot of the time, these circuits do not appear until you turn on a start point, right? So when I see something like this, I'm like, oh, I can't turn that on, so I'm not going to bother. But this is actually this other circuit, right? So the game kind of taught me not to try to find these. And it also, for some reason, made this disappear into the wall when it could have just kept it within tracing region and showed me from out there that this attaches to this. Like, it's not interesting to hide this. So I'm, yeah, this is a sucky puzzle, dude. Um, okay. So I guess I'm going to actually run under the door and lock myself out. Like, maybe that is the puzzle? After all? So then once I do that, I have no idea how I'm supposed to get out, but um, all right. disappear somewhere. All right. Great. So indeed, I probably locked myself out. Maybe not. Oh, now I can trace it. Like, what? Like, if I could have just traced that before. Like, I don't even understand the rules anymore about when I can. Like, now it's fine. And this is the same circuit as like that. And so this circuit's been li I don't understand when this goes live and I can start tracing it and when it doesn't. So that makes me extra, extra annoyed at the video game. Oh, so this cable, let's get this straight. This cable that has power going through it, a spark will happen eventually, probably, that goes right into this box that I'm trying to solve in line with the lever has nothing to do with it. Or maybe that's supposed to be the output cable for this, but I don't. All right. So now we have another scripted scene. And then let me guess, I drop a grenade in there. What do I do? Or maybe that's just supposed to be a head crab attack. So I guess I can reopen the door from this side. Is the puzzle that this is double-sided? Yes. OK. Yeah. See, that part is good. OK, this whole puzzle 
could turn from a bad puzzle into a good puzzle by not changing the idea of the buzz puzzle at all, by changing the environment design and the design of the way this tool works to be more consistent and understandable by the player, right? This tool is very frustrating and doesn't give feedback in basic cases. Like, you guys saw me come up here a couple times and I was like trying to scan this thing and there were, was nothing leading out of it and then now all of a sudden there is, right? That lack of consistency makes this annoying and frustrating. This part is interesting because it, to my recollection, it's the first time that they did double-sided. And that's cool. But for that to actually work, several other things have to change. Um, yeah. All right. I'm going to stop ranting before I just get too, too freaking angry. Can I like stabilize this with a hand? Like what is this dude shooting at? I don't know if I can throw a nade through there. We can try and then fail. Okay, how much, can I just walk around in here or am I gonna hit the wall? Oh, I'm gonna hit the wall, great. Great, 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 great. Okay, so I'm gonna go back here, I'm gonna go there, and I'm gonna walk. I don't know. When it comes down to cheesing the AI, that's just not not the best. I guess I should be trying to shoot that. I guess since he's dead, my threat identifier won't tell me. Okay, so we open the force field here. Hopefully there's nothing relevant there. Ah, we'll heal, why not? That's probably a safe room down there, right? Sorry, buddy. Right. Yeah, I mean, again, that puzzle on paper is fine. In fact, some things about it make more sense, like the fact that you can run under that door and it wasn't a force field now makes sense because that was the point of the puzzle. Um,
Although I guess you didn't have to... I mean, I guess I could have just turned it because it was double-sided. I could have just left the door open and gone in there. And then shut the door and done the thing. So, yeah, whatever. Whatever, man. All right. So honestly, it could have just been a force field and it's the same puzzle. So maybe it's not that good? I don't know. Where you left? I just litter. I leave mags everywhere, man. shot by someone else or did it like did I hit his tank and it fizzes for a while and then blows up I don't know I don't know oh yeah okay so I thought because it didn't blow up immediately I needed to keep shooting him really I guess I should shoot it once and then take cover and wait all right, that is the strat, I guess. Boy, most of the cables are gone now. Whoa, Russell, Forge just took down the last substation. Oh, let me see. Eli, the Forge just took down the last substation. Brace yourself, Alex, it's gonna come down. Hey, what the? They've activated some sort of emergency backup. They've activated a backup. Tell Alex there's no way that backup is safe. She can shut it down. Your dad said. I heard it. So head towards those beams, right? Right. That's got to be the backup station. Critical breach. Stand by. Stand by. I hope whoever's in there is worth it. What's that, Alex? Nothing. I'm on my way. Mag. Ow, how do you hit me there? I don't think I hit the tank.
Left hand peek. Jeff Mark II. Is that Judith Mossman? If it's still here when she gets there, he's gone. What in the history of today makes you think you're going to stop her? Look, this guy we've got in there survived Black Mesa. He raised holy hell and then just disappeared. It's Gordon so Freeman. You're just going to let him go again? Move the box. He's the one in man army. Survived Black Mesa, then disappeared. Eli, they do have a super weapon. God damn it, Russ, they got Gordon Freeman. Oh, wow. That's good, right? This is very, very good. This is a miracle. All right. So, let's go save Gordon Freeman. Oh, incoming. Hey, give me a second. Does this thing not pierce? God, dude, don't don't set up combat inside a tight space, please. I'm like in the wall the whole time. Last cell. Oh shit, he's actually shooting through soft cover, okay. That was kind of cool, I guess. Okay, so the plan is- Could have stood to be introduced to that earlier. I'll be honest, people talk about him a lot, but I always just assumed he was dead. Me too. Hey, Dad, are you there? Yeah, what's up, Alex? If Gordon survived Black Mesa, where's he been? I don't know, but I bet it's a hell of a story. In the G-Man's extra-dimensional warp. That's where he's been. Where'd Judith Mossman go? Out that way. All right. I have to go find bug juice.
Where did I come down? I guess it wasn't there. It was from the floor above that. Oops. Last one. I guess I'm not supposed to go over this. Should I play multi-tool again? No. I hate the multi-tool. You're supposed to like the multi-tool, and I hate the frickin' multi-tool. Okay, well, great, there's items. Someone was hiding out here. Probably wasn't Gordon. He's been in extra dimensional space. Probably wasn't Judith Mossman because, like, okay, if I go down, oh, I guess I go up somehow and then back down is what it wants, right? I can't go back there. Maybe I missed it. Rip. Rip whatever was in that room. Like, I wish I knew for sure when I can go back and when I can't, you know. Maybe I still can. I don't know. Oh, maybe I still can. I don't know. I don't know what's where in this game. So clearly I can't go up that. Much as I would like to. Oh, maybe this, maybe this does something. There's no alien sticky grenade. 
So I'm just gonna like try to be at max range from that thing. Oh, come on, bro. I have two hearts, so it shouldn't kill me. I guess if I let it go up and then run further, like now. Nope. Ah, oh, one heart. That wasn't so bad. Can I just shoot those? Like, maybe I can shoot them with the alien energy beam. Once we get Gordon back, we can really get ambitious, don't you think, Russ? Maybe we could take down the Citadel. Well, he saved humanity once. I'm willing to bet he can do it again. And this time he won't have to do it alone. Now I don't have health, man. Yeah, okay, so I am studying it sort of with my hand. I don't know. Like, I don't know if this stops recoil, but I, I can actually aim with the front hand a little bit. Which is interesting. I mean, maybe that's just regular object motion. So I could go, can't really go there. So I can go this way. Health station. I feel sorry. No alien bugs were harmed. You know, it's been a while since I had to do one of these, and it's been great, honestly. Ooh, very long lines now. I'm sure that makes it a more interesting puzzle. Whoops. I got too anxious. Play. Once again, it's not turning on my flashlight, so... Would it have been so hard to just give me a flashlight button so I can look in this corner and convince myself... Looks like they're milking the leggies. It's with all the orange sauce. 
is for the orange sauce is leggy milk. Okay, so this probably triggers a scripted event when I go back out, maybe? Or I just go up this ladder. And then it tr triggers a scripted event. Oh. I don't know the right time to shoot. I should just hit the legs first. I'm trying to go straight for the middle, but it's maybe not the play. Yeah, without the both legs, they have to fly a little bit, I guess. And then that means their Russ, little armor isn't on. What do you think on. they're doing to Gordon Freeman in there? Good question. Are they, you know, sucking his brain out? That's not I what I thought she was going to say. Well, either way, let's not find out. I'll get there before it happens. That's a little bit creative. Excuse for a bridge. It's like this is how they would empty. So I guess they milk them and then they empty the orange milk into this river area and then it drains to go somewhere i don't know i don't know man Something's going to attack me as soon as I start doing this. Oh, God. I can't. My floor height is miscalibrated. So I can't reach down and get that. Like, I feel like I'm supposed to pull on the grate or something. Maybe it opens. Maybe it's attached to a switch. I just, my floor height is like, oh, it's not that miscalibrated, I guess. It's just like an inch. Maybe it just recalibrated. Anyway, I don't think I'm supposed to be able to reach that thing. So, rip. I was like, okay, that's not going to reach all the way, is it? All right, so here's what we do. Shit, what? Alex. That was under the thing, guys. I guess I'm supposed to drop it down through the hole, and that's the puzzle. That was under the thing, right? 
I was going to throw the grenade under the thing and then I was going to climb up the ladder while it's getting ready to explode. And then I was going to be safely in the top room when it exploded. And uh, that, as you can see, well, you can see exactly how well that plan worked out. So I guess they want me to drop a grenade from on top or do something from on top, right? So did I actually hit the thing? Or is it hard-coded that if a grenade goes in there, they just kill me? I feel like it was the second one because I, I thought it was pretty low. I could have just honestly just rested it right there instead of throwing it. I don't know, man. So I'm supposed to shoot a barrel from up here instead of drop a grenade from down there, maybe, which is fine. some invisible collision there. That was overkill. Alright. Like, why even do that? Okay, that's probably the way forward, so... I mean, I could go see if there's more resin through that door. See, I can't tell anymore. Early in the game, I could tell when I was about to step into a loading zone, and now I cannot. So that could be a loading zone for all I know, and that would be bad because I'd miss my chance to look at the weapon upgrades that I'm not gonna buy. Ooh, four. Four Zs. So why doesn't that one ever go? Wait, what? Am I, is my depth perception off? I, I guess. Like it has to go about that close. Like that looks like it's going straight through, but that might be a rendering. Like what is happening there? Okay, I, it only hits it if it's off on this direction, I think that's just a sign that that's not the intended solution. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? All right. I mean, I 
That's pretty weird. That's a weird bug, if I'm being honest. So what is this collinear with? Not really anything. Yeah, I know how to operate. Like, I'm 18 hours into the game. It's still being condescending. So it looks like this and this maybe? No, too far. Like what? Like why is that not? Which one's even missing now? Oh, wait, every, you can't over solve. I guess this is an error because this beam has an angry red cloud. That's very tweaky and weird, folks. Why can't I grab that box between these other two boxes that I can grab? This way, step this way, go this way. I just wanted to see if there was anything in it. Okay, so last I checked, there wasn't really anything useful to get for the pistol anymore. Burst fire, yeah, we don't care. Uh, oh, we were saving for nade launcher, which is, oh, God damn it. Which is probably 40. Yeah, so we need two more resins, unfortunately. And we don't care about anything, because why would you auto-load ammo when you have... Well, we've got 18, which is probably our historical maximum number of shotgun shots. We would rather have grenade launcher. And the problem is, I haven't been good enough about looting, and there's two more resins that we need, so rip. See, I don't know if it, I, I assume it launches these grenades, in which case, if nothing else, it gives me more of an inventory of grenades, which would be cool. All right, let's re-sweep this for a second, make sure we didn't miss any easy resins. Yeah, whatever. Whatever, man. Is that a loading zone? It certainly seems one way. Too scripted to bother shooting. Okay, I think this is a Call of Duty thing where it'll trigger a boss battle when I drop down there? Something? I'm gonna put that over by that cone so I know where it is. Yep. Call of Duty. Oh, shit. Right. 
reload this thing. What did it think I was trying to store? I should aim the damn shotgun. That's why you don't they don't give you the shotgun, because it knocks dudes back. That's not gonna go far enough. Alright. This is a Call of Duty make forward progress moment. Shit, dude. I've been slimed. Bless out. Come on, guys. Jesus. Lo oh, I can't tell. Why am I having so much trouble with that guy all of a sudden? It's terrible. Okay. Okay, where did I leave my health? Didn't I throw it down? Maybe I just lost it. Ow! Ow. Dude, I'm bleeding. Ooh. Last one. Hey, Russ. You want to swap in here? Yeah, no. I would probably die instantly. Pointless. Where is he? Oh, up there.
Nose is always itchy. Oh, we got to reload our shotgun. Dude, I missed those bugs so many times. I deserved to lose that fight, and I did not. I just kept trying to hit them in the weak spot for massive damage, and I just kept missing. It was crazy. Oh, my nose itches so bad. Get up there. Hope that wasn't an alarm. All right, so I got to open all the three of these simultaneously, right? So the question is, how do you do that? Because I don't see any branching, right? I just see rotations. So I don't see a way to fan out. Which is weird. OK, so that'll open the top. Maybe I'm supposed to open top, middle, bottom in order, right? I mean, maybe. Oh, maybe I have to open them all before they stop blinking. That's the puzzle. So I have to set it up. So bottom, if I rotate this one, OK, this is set up for bottom. Right? If I rotate that one. And then middle, middle, we rotate this one. So we're going to go bam, bam. That was a loading room. OK, break time. It's hot in this room. Although I'll wait till we load in. Oh, it's going to say press trigger to continue. So we'll just try not to press the trigger. I hope you enjoyed that hair raising near death experience. How's it going, people? The last puzzle was actually not bad. It wasn't super bad. It's just, um, you know, it was not clear to me from observing the first thing closing that, oh, hold on. Did I not? OK, I'm not sure if I switched to the mic correctly. Like, when, when I opened the first one and then it closed, which is sort of the natural first thing you would do when trying to solve that puzzle, um, I felt like it closed first and then blinked, and then I guess closed more or something, right? Which, in, in reality, it like retracted to an intermediate position, I guess, and then blinked and then closed, or I don't know what happened. That was my impression. I would have to go back and watch the VOD. So if it actually did that, if it actually closed to an intermediate position, that's bad. What you would like is just to have two states open and closed, and um, 
just a timer, right? You just want to make it clear that it's a timer. Like, you know, since the language, part of the little alien language is a circle that ticks down. Like, for example, that's your ammo in the alien gun. I would have just had that be those timers. And then it's clear what the puzzle is, and then you just solve it, right? Can the controls vibrate? Yeah, they do have some rumble in them, and it, it helps a lot when you're playing. Yeah, or you could have it be like a mechanical clock hand or something. I don't know. I mean, guys, okay, here's the thing. Melee sucks in VR. Like, I fully understand why they didn't do Melee, because it's terrible, and you shouldn't do a game with Melee in VR. Uh, yeah, first playthrough. First playthrough. Did I like Jeff? Um, I liked Jeff for about the first half. Once it got super scripted and they trap you in the elevator with him, that was lame. And then um, I don't know. There was something after that that was lame also. The initial Jeff was was good, good gameplay and stuff, but the problem is, I mean, it's not really a problem, I guess, but it was just copied from other games and like, okay, cool. I saw this in those other games. Now I see it in Half-Life Alex. great. But it, you know, it's not like, um, it's not like it was an amazing new game idea, right? It's just, okay, this is another execution of this thing from other games. Whereas Valve used to be the company that did amazing ideas. That's all. What's wrong with VR melee combat? There's no feedback whatsoever on it. So you just swing through everything and you just, like if it's a sword fight, you just go like this. And it sucks and it's stupid. <laughs> it doesn't feel anything like actual melee, right? Like one thing that makes melee work in mouse and keyboard games, for example, or gamepad games, is there's a timing on the attack. Like you attack, you do a light, like a light attack or a heavy attack, and there's a timing and a reset on that. And you can't really do that in VR because it has to be mapped to your hand, right? Um, I mean, I suppose you could have some like blade swingy axe where you held it out and then the blade would swing and then it had to crank back and reset. Um, that might be fine, but it would also be weird. It also wouldn't be melee, so. Blade and Sorcery does VR melee really well. I don't believe you, sorry. Zero VR games that I've played that had melee did what I considered to be good melee. <laughs> so if you say, like I might, I might believe that one game did it slightly not as bad as other games, but if you're telling me it does it well, I just don't believe it because I don't believe it's possible to do it well. Do I think VR melee combat can be good with good audiovisual design plus good weapon design? No, I do not. I do not think that. Time to ship a real sword and cadaver with every VR melee game. Yep. Until you fall makes melee into more of a rhythm action game and that works well without needing to provide feedback, maybe. I mean, if you make it into a different thing, then sure. Do 
you think you could have VR melee with better controllers? No. I mean, not within current human technology levels, no. I mentioned education being the problem for solving the tech crisis, collapse of civilization. Have I thought about how I try to change education? A little bit, but, um, you know, I, I mean, I would basically do a little bit of what I'm doing, and, and so that's fine. <laughs> Melee combat could be solved with some wire stuff. Yeah, I mean, maybe. Maybe. You know, my camera doesn't need to be pointed as far up as it is. I think, I think something more like this is more appropriate, right? We never got to fight the gorilla that they implied. Maybe that'll happen in the end. There's too many new people to teach them all properly. I mean, maybe, but not if the educational system was teaching the right things, right? That's, that's how you solve that problem is you have to either convince the existing educational structure to teach better things, or you have to build an alternative educational structure that does teach those things that will eventually win. Those are the two pathways. There's always surprise that Half-Life games didn't have more Earth animal enemies. Yeah, I don't know. Did the education system here in the U.S. ever teach things properly? Probably not. I mean, compared to what, right? I certainly could design an educational system that was worse. So it's definitely succeeding to some degree at some things. You know what I mean? You try to learn at work, but you are made to use ECS. What size team are you on that, that uses ECS? And is it because you're using Unity or is it because it's your own engine? 20 to 25. Hybrid. Yeah, that doesn't sound like an ECS situation to me. Twenty. Yeah, no. What advice would I give to someone who wants to re-educate himself? The same thing I always say. Like, you have to, um, if you're not going through systemic education, if you're self-teaching, the main thing that ever worked for me was to find a hard problem that I wanted to solve and work on that, and then I can see what I needed to know, what I wasn't good at, what I was good at, and et cetera, right? And, that, and then, you know, there's a lot of information available on the internet, for example, but if you don't know what to look for, it could be hard, right? So the hard problem gives you a start of knowing what to look for. Pure ECS slash dots, I mean, if you're using Unity, I guess that's fine. Um, I don't know. Like it's probably better than using the other part of Unity, the regular entity part of Unity, or whatever it's called, game object part. Um, so that's all right. It's just, you know, I don't think, like again, the problem that ECS solves is not what people think think it is usually. I'm not going to get into another ECS rant. 
With respect of the, to the aspects of software development that I touch on, treating the hardware as the platform. Well, again, why? Okay, so, you know, why do I think that these things are important, right? There are reasons. What are those reasons? It's because there are things I was trying to accomplish and those served as my test of reality of, you know, what kinds of things needed to be done to accomplish what I needed to accomplish, right? Like, I don't, I don't have these opinions for no reason. And so you can form similarly validated opinions by attempting to solve the problems. And then you see, compare different ideas of how to approach the problems. And don't just guess how good they're going to be. Observe the results of doing it different ways. How important is having a CS degree for earning good money? I have no idea. I don't have a CS degree, but, you know, I started a company and most people don't do that. You've heard that it is best to quit reading any book as soon as you get bored so you can move on to a book that might be better. Do you agree? Maybe. I mean, it depends on why you're bored. Right? Sometimes for people, boredom is a way to avoid thinking and avoid working. If that's the case, then that's bad advice. Um, if it's the case that you're just not interested and that there would be an equivalent book that you could read that would be as richly informative or more and that you wouldn't be bored with, then yes, that's good advice. No, seriously, like some people, some people use any excuse they can get to avoid actually working, avoid actually thinking, avoid actually um, investing in stuff, <laughs> you know? If I consider taking students and educating them on design, game design, I mean, I've, I've thought about it, but um, I'm just too busy right now. I mean, obviously I have to play VR games, but no, seriously, I've just got too many projects happening right now and I can't add another one, but in the future, maybe that's a thing that might happen. Would I ever take a look at the Hearthstone puzzle mode? No, probably not. Started reading Christopher Alexander's The Nature of Order, got through one book and was just so bored with his pseudoscience. Well, you know, that's probably fine. I mean, well, here's the other part of that rule for me is like, there is a certain amount of time that people have to get you interested, right? And one book should be plenty. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, you know, I haven't read The Nature of Order. I read his earlier stuff, and I didn't find him to be into pseudoscience, right? But he might have changed that. Um, for me, uh, what he was working on was, A, uh, very clearly Taoist, right? Not trying to be scientific, but but using this uh, idea of the right making of things that is very related to Taoism. Um, and B, uh, I agreed with most of what he was saying because it's the same in game design, right? Now, I disagreed strongly with some of his conclusions. Like, I agreed with most of what he was saying with respect to um, how to practice architecture broadly. But then at the end of, I forget which book, at the end of the second book or something, where he extrapolates that out to like socio-political systems, I was like, no, this is naive because it doesn't, uh, it doesn't in fact incorporate enough scientific knowledge. But I never saw him doing like pseudoscience in those books. Uh, maybe he does in the later ones, or maybe I disagree with you about the characterization. Anyway, I think it's time to go game some more. Any solid recommendations for examples of good systems game design? Steven Sausage Roll. Also, as a bonus, you get delicious sausages.
I just slammed my chair into one of my VR tripods, so we will see how miscalibrated it's going to be. Back on the HMD microphone, hopefully. Hopefully you can hear me. Check one, check two, check three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, let's see if we could play this video game. I just see gray everywhere. Now I have to guess where my controllers are because they are off. Now I have to power them on. That's one, that's two. I still don't have hands though. Why don't I have hands? Oh, because I have to click. That's weird. Breaking and entering into the Gordon zone. Oh my God, look at this tracking. We will try to deal. Oh, this guy again. Look how many bullets does this guy have? Given how infrequently I succeed at throwing grenades, I really shouldn't bother picking them up. Oh, I don't have my gas mask anymore. Right. I'm going to go here and it's going to... Uh, script me. Oh, uh, maybe not. That's 39. Oh. Yeah. Should have known. If I'd stood over here, he might not have caught it. of ammo, but all right. I can get that later or nope, it's too far. Well, if there's a weapon upgrade station before I can get that, I'll be sad, but there probably won't be. Reminds me a lot of that room that I hated. Okay, we have doohickey levers. They, uh, I don't know, there's a pipe, I don't know. Oh, that's not, a, I thought there was a need. 
Now we totally have enough for the grenade launcher, by the way. I'm a mime. Let go. Thank you. Okay, that's not a thing, I guess. Oh, I didn't see this door handle from back there. Did that LOD out? I was like, I'm not going to try to unboard that door because it doesn't have a handle on it. Maybe it was behind the handle from where I was looking. gonna throw a cardboard box at me? Seriously? Like... There's the thing, it doesn't, it doesn't become a better game by adding more red lines. It's not really how this works. Well,
Right. This thing again. We know about this thing now. So I'm not sure, okay. So on the left side, clearly we just want this to be, oh. Well, I mean, if the pipe rotates, what's the point? Okay. So I can walk there. I could climb down. So I guess I need I don't know what the game wants me to do. Am I not able to climb down there? I assume I am because I've climbed down further things. So the problem is getting up the other side. So I need to lay the pipe like diagonally, so to speak. Um, and then have this be down. Something like that. doesn't reach if you make a video game like this don't put extra buttons that don't do anything um, well except wait I can, can I pull those boards off like with the door I don't know. We must go answer these questions for ourselves. Hope I can get back. Yes. So. So the real thing is maybe that needs to be down, but then what? I feel like the point of the puzzle is to do more pipe stuff, right? Okay. I can go there. Is that the one that I dropped way down? I remember it was at the bottom of a ladder. I'm gonna assume I don't need to do anything there. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Games in the year 2020. Goat Simulator. This isn't Half-Life 3, this is Goat Simulator 3. 
and frog fractions four. Okay, so did I not try to open this thing? Not openable. Okay, so we want to go across. So I guess I just lower the the doodad. So that I could like stand on it. Like I don't I don't really know. So that's obviously that's obviously not good. My problem is I don't yet understand why there's this complicated of a setup. I can't tell if I'm going to be able to do that. My assumption is maybe not, but we have to try because I don't actually know. Oh, we can. We can do this part. Okay, um, I literally don't understand why, why such a complicated puzzle setup. I feel like maybe that was originally supposed to be more of a puzzle. Like, I really, I have no idea. Maybe I should have gotten my health. Should have put my health somewhere. Well, if I ever get desperate, I could go back somehow. This probably, oh, shit. This probably hooks back up because there was a lock on, oh no, I, that was that room, Never mind. Okay, we get the nade launcher. Alex, we're getting close to the vault now. You're not going to have many more chances to use your resin. Good point. I'll see if there are any upgrades I can use. I can't believe my pistol's made it this far. I was thinking about giving it to Gordon. Alright. Gordon's going to get the shotgun with the sick grenade launcher. Oh, it has to be the tool hand. Oh, there's one of these again. Why do they do this? This is like one of the worst things to do. <sighs> really? So I guess we're going to get the nade launcher. Does this like give me infinite grenades? No, right? Let's try it. That's quite a good range. 
All right, so it gives me one extra inventory slot. All right. That's way better than throwing them. I'm not going to be able to get back. Great. My health is over there, man. Oh, maybe I will. No way am I going to be able to grab those from here. Whale. Rip. Ripper McGillicuddy. That sure was a lot of resin for a grenade launcher. What's that guy again? I don't want to waste my grenade launcher on this guy. Oh, damn. I took damage. I didn't think I was getting hit. Got any more needs for me? No. <laughs> Shit, what the hell was that? Door physics. Come on, pull it. Oh, yeah, it is forward. Oh, God. I should, I should throw grenades back, honestly, when that happens. I'm just not used to trying it. Is it a need? No. Can use the rest of the health station. Because we got inventory slots now. Why waste them?
Testing one, two, three, okay. We should be back. We should be back, yes. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Testing one, two, three. Okay, good. So what happened there is as I was playing, the cable was getting more and more tangled up from turning and stuff. And then when I like ducked down and did something to shoot, I kicked away the, there's like this breakaway cable, right? It's like a breakaway display port cable that this HMD has. Now the problem is when you break away this breakaway cable, it kills the video feed from the HMD, right? Or to the HMD and the microphone. And then I think, I think OBS couldn't handle that and was locked up and stalled on the fact that it couldn't contact the device. Instead of leaving those things frozen and just still streaming the camera, which I could at least wave to you until I got another microphone up, um, it, uh, it just froze because this is the year 2020. So I'm going to straighten out the cable and then we'll try playing that again. I suspect, like, so the game died, like Steam VR just hung completely and I had to it popped up a window saying Steam VR is no longer responding do you want to restart it so um, I assume I have to resume the save game from whatever the last auto save was it's again it's so it's so weirdly unprofessional of Steam V, like Steam VR just seems super crappy to me, right? It's weirdly unprofessional that they deliver you an HMD with a breakaway cable, right? That if you put tension on it in the wrong direction, it'll quite easily break away, right? And when that happens, Steam VR crashes. Like what? Like you guys designed it to do that, right? You know that, right? Maybe it used to not crash and they just haven't tested it, I don't know, in a while. Okay. Rooms. All right. We're turning on our hands again. And uh, we're just going to see. I mean, hopefully it's it'll resume us like right before that battle. And we could play it. I'm looking out of the corner of my eye to make sure that you all will be able to see this when it comes up. I know you have a black screen on OBS right now, but hopefully when the game launches, if it launches, it's still launching. It says next up. It is not in fact actually launching though. And that's, um, seems like a cause for concern to me. It says next up. I sure feel like this game is next. <sighs> um, I think I'm going to have to go do some control alt delete and like killing some processes and whatever. Like, I don't even know. It sure isn't starting the game. Oh, wait, it faded out the next up, but it also has not launched the game. So, um, yeah, year 2020, everybody. So I'm not sure if I will, uh, lose the mic when I exit Steam. Okay, on my desktop, the cursor is just spinning. So we're just gonna, we're gonna control alt delete 
everything to do with steam and hopefully my mic will stay up okay yeah it's still going all right we killed steam we're killing Testing. Okay, you can hear me again now that Steam VR is back up. So now the question is, can I actually launch the game? Uh, there was no gorilla as far as I saw. All right. By the way, all this is what you what you have to do if you accidentally kick out the breakaway cable. Okay, it actually launched. So let's turn off the display capture. It's just so weird, like, why is this that complicated that they have all these services that have to get restarted and get into weird states and stuff? Like, it's just not that hard. Maybe that's what happens as soon as you decide to have services. I don't know. All right, so I have controllers. I have itchy nose. I have a guy with a valve on the back of his head. All right, we have title screen. Hopefully this is all good for everybody. It looks like it's good. We're loading. Guess you can't say the breakaway cable didn't break things. I mean, it didn't break anything physical, which I guess is good. But I mean, maybe. Oh, I thought I was way back at the other battle, dude. I would have been so bummed. Remember the big antlion battle? I thought I was there. God damn it, dude. Where are all these guys coming from? Where are all these guys coming from? Jesus! Alex. How, am I, how am I supposed to fight all these guys? So this is when all of a sudden combats just get unreasonable. <laughs> Unless I, I have to fight this by staying in the corner. Because these guys have way too many HP. Some of them have shields. So if I run around into the middle of the play field, I'm basically dead. And the problem is that's where I am. So I have to stay on one end of the play field and just freaking take cover. Like back here and just don't peek. And I'm still taking hits. Do I have nades? No. I do have health. I forgot I had health. See, I just have to keep doing this, which is not great. If this was Serious Sam or Doom, you would have to go out. But, like, it's not what game we're playing. Now I have the extra difficulty of worrying about the breakaway cable. Oh no, I want 
going to need. Okay, so that's hardcover, I guess. Oh, we need. Yeah, baby. I mean, this honestly, this isn't that exciting. <laughs> oh shit. It's more exciting when you forget to chamber around before attempting to fire. Like, it's like, all right. Now, I'm not being attacked by four more guys, which means that it was moving in that direction that triggered those guys, which is honestly kind of ass. I hate that kind of game design. So, like, I wouldn't have died if I hadn't gone that way. I lost more HP trying to use my health than it gave me. Ow, bro. Fuck. Bro, hit it. Don't at me, bro. All right. I want this to work more reliably, please. Oh, I'm outside the room. Like that looks like, I wish that looked less open. Last cell. All right. Hmm. I probably shouldn't have used my needles. I guess I want to prefer, like if I'm going to lob a hand grenade, I have more time. If I want to stab a needle, I want to do it fast. So it should be, this should be the needle hand. This should be the nade hand. Shotgun shells, bro. Notice how I didn't even try to like fire the shotgun at those ranges. All right. feel like I'm missing some loot or something. Yeah, these guys were just like standing in this corner. Okay. 
I just wish I could get it a little sharper, man. Oops. Double tap the lock. Unnecessary roughness. This feels like a missed game right here. Wasted a lot of ammo on that guy. But it doesn't matter that I wasted ammo because the game is DDA'd. It's a fake perception of being low on ammo. No loots for me. No loots for me. Okay, so that's the normal stairway. I guess I go there. Dude, the room is everywhere. I was at the end of the magazine. I should have tank shot that guy. Yeah. Stupid. I could go all the way back down to the health station. Not gonna do it. Not gonna do it. Where'd he go? Last one. I'm out. Try something stupid. He was just chilling three feet away from a grenade. No problem. There's a control room. I see it. We're almost 
Wait, that hit me? What? Screw you, game. We gotta get more bug juice out of the container. Alex, you there? Yeah, Dad. It looks like you will be able to get into the vault from up there. There's a terminal that extends a bridge to the entrance. What's the security like inside? I got it all laid out in front of me, and I tell you, there is security. But I've never seen anything like it. It doesn't make any sense. I guess I'll have to improvise. It's uh, don't worry, honey. I'll interdimensional security. Okay, that's forward. So. What? Oh, God, game. Alex? Alex! <sighs> I hope you are all entertained by that. That wonderful thing that just happened. Second time that's happened to me in this game. Oh good, it saved before the combat, by the way. Great. We didn't, we didn't want to have won that combat, this is fine. How am I not hitting these guys like at all, bro? What is happening? Do they have more HP all of a sudden? I didn't hear any sounds, so I must have just totally potatoed that. Wish I had the laser sight on this now. All right. You know what? You know what we do now? So what happened to the needle that was here? I broke open the box and there was a needle. Oh, it's down there. Or maybe that's a different one. Okay, so I guess that's forward, but I don't see a bug juice here, which is unusual. Oh, it's there. It's a, it's a puzzle to realize you can get the bug juice through a force field, which I guess I never realized. All right. Okay. Cool, cool. Maybe that auto saves? The bug juice machine? I don't know. Out of cells. Okay, be careful to step Alex, there. Yeah, Dad? It looks like you will be able to get into the vault from up there. 
There's a terminal that exists. They got security, the but it's crazy. It doesn't make any sense. It's all laid out in front of me, and I tell you, there is security. But I've never seen anything like it. It doesn't make any sense. I guess I'll have to improvise. Uh, don't worry, honey. I'll figure it out. There's security. Alex, dead ahead. Those controls dock the vault to the station. On it. On it. Ow. All right. Here we go. Time to go rescue the savior of humanity. I'm locked in. You know, honey, you haven't been doing too bad yourself. Earth could have used you in the seven hour war. Maybe we'd have lasted eight. All right. Looks like the bridge is fully extended. Just need to gently dock the vault to the bridge. How far can that be? Oh, God. Okay. Well, one of these has to bring in the vault for docking. Right? Right? Almost certainly. Maybe? No, not that one. Alex, the bridge isn't moving. Why isn't the bridge not moving? I know. Russ, I can see it not moving. Okay, definitely not. That doesn't look good. Ugh. Is there supposed to be like a clue? I just see a bunch of flashing lights. Scripted. Alex, Alex, Alex. Scripted. Scripted. Alex? Alex? Alex, are you okay? Wait, I think I just killed Gordon Freeman. The vault's right there. Just go in and get him. What's left of him? I'm on he's, my way. He's in an interdimensional safety chamber. He's fine. Should have aimed for the tank, which I did not do. When you have stealth on them, aim for the tank, bro. Dude, that was that was a headshot right there, bro. That third one. The first two were misses. I guess they just tank headshots and DGAF. They don't even stun now because we're toward the later game.
Oh, I can just jam it in there. Right. I look like a nade. This looks pretty good. I'm not going to waste my nade on these guys. Shit, I just tripped on my cable again, dude. Oh, he's right there. I was like, where is he? Where is it? Eh. Waste a couple bullets. Doesn't matter. DDA. Out of cells. A strider. Deactivated though. Whew, lucky break there. Could you imagine that thing blocking your way? We saw one earlier. Yes. Don't jinx me. Like, we saw one in the very first scene, dude. I can't crawl under there. Maybe I can. I mean, this is a barrel, right? Ugh. I mean, why don't I just... Why don't I just crawl under? back here in the room. And I can crawl under. Okay, that wasn't a dude. There's a closed chest in there, but this appears to... Eh? I don't know. I mean, how much can I cheese in this game? Can I, like, do this? No. different way. Maybe I don't.
Like, why did that make an iOS puzzle game sound? Like... Okay, so red cable, so now we can actually run the elevator. But, we want to get in this room. You know what I'm saying? And I don't have reason to believe that red elevator will take me to that room. Although, I mean, it's got a, it's got a bug juice in it. I don't really see like a door. Oh, right here. I'm blind. I'm blind. It's because the damn. Oh. I don't need the bug juice. I especially don't need the bug juice. Let go. Well, a little bit underwhelming. It's fine. Well, we'll go back the other way. So we don't have to do that. I kind of don't feel like that was this intended solution, but you know what? It's fine. Where was the button? There it is. Ding. Does that mean she's supposed to go somewhere? What does moving mean? Like, I don't think I can take this guy out with this. I guess I'm supposed to go upstairs? Nope, 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 nope. I don't remember what the layout is out there. So there's nothing to my right. I have to go that way, I guess. That's my two bullets. Plus one bullet. So do I go in the elevator and behind that thing, I guess? Oh, come on, room. Room.
This would be a lot more cool if I didn't have my room grid on the screen at all times. Wait, I'm back in the elevator. That's not good. Where am I trying to go then? Up there? Under the strider? Yep. When you reach the scripted falling rocks, you know you're going the right way. I notice the game's not giving me resin anymore. Oh shit, there's another one. Oh, I'll use this now. I now have a serious VR headache, but we're going to go. Oh god. What the hell, guys? Okay. This is kind of bullshit level design. Because there's no way for me to know what is instant death prior to dying. It's like, okay, there's a giant strider behind you and there's four guys and they all have a ton of HP. Like, yeah, not great. It's like, it's just very easy to end up with an LOS of four guys that you didn't know were there. We'll go back in in a second, but we're taking a break. Teleports forwards into the middle of them. Cause I only knew there was one guy. 
But I was going around him to like flank him, like, you know. <laughs> and by the way, there was like a giant, huge robo dude that I can't damage behind me. So it's like going forward in that instance is the natural thing. I started getting a really weird headache there too. So it, I don't know what, like sometimes my tracking is better and sometimes it's worse. And when it's worse, it's not that great. <laughs> Obviously. Obviously. Well, it's not just being pressured forward from by the strider, but like I didn't really have cover where I was. And if the dude chucked an aid at me, I don't know if that guy can chuck an aid, but if he did, then I would definitely be going back into the strider, right? Like, yeah, it's just not. I mean, I guess this is a disadvantage of teleport motion, right? So if I had continuous motion, then I would be running toward the guy and then I would at least have a, have a reasonable chance of seeing the guys off to the side. I mean, you know, cause I mean, peripheral vision in an HMD isn't amazing, but you might be looking around and see them with teleport motion. Like by the time, by the time you realize there's guys around you, it's just too late. Cause you're like way in there. So that might be the thing is like the game design just feels very different with teleport motion than with continuous motion. That could be the real problem there. What you needed was a crowbar, maybe. Maybe I could have chucked a crowbar. Yeah, that's a that's definitely something I need to think about. Like, you know, trying like again with continuous motion, you would like try to move forward. And then even if you didn't see the guys, usually in these games, they'll like say something when they spot you, right, to give you an audio cue. And again, by the time I get that, I've teleported way out into the middle of them as well. And then I don't realize how many there are and I'm trying to get behind cover and I'm like, oh, there's like four dudes. I can't get behind cover from all of them. So definitely, definitely teleport movement is just a different thing in these cases. Does teleport have the quick turn? Yeah, I just don't use it. Ah. <sighs> Oh, I think we'll go back. It will take a little bit of a break again, and then we'll go back in and do this. Some Valve devs are watching the stream. They must have turned off at this point. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what Valve people do with their day. Use quick turn a lot to avoid hitting the boundaries too much. Yeah. You really want to see me get to the end. Well, I don't know how far we are from the end. It could be 10 more hours, in which case it's not going to happen tonight. It could be 10 more minutes. Or it could be 10 more seconds. It could be 10 more nanoseconds.
What design iterations would I like for VR hardware? Well, I'm not an expert in VR hardware. In fact, I know very little about VR hardware. I mean, I think if you ask the VR people, not the AR people, because those people are nuts, but if you ask the people working on this at like Valve, probably, I like Valve's direction more than Oculus's direction, um, their answers are probably correct, right? You want to go wireless, but without sacrificing a high-end experience. You want it to be lighter. You want the optics to be better, right? You want the controllers to be, you know, you want tracking improved. You want less setup hassle. Like, they know all these things, and they're working on them. So, well, provided they don't abandon the product, which I don't know if they would or not. But, um, you know, they're, they're working on the right things. I think VR hardware is naturally just going to get better. There's VR overlays for room center markers I might consider. Yeah, I just, eh. I think you just want, like I said in previous streams, you just want the game design to not have this problem, period. That's the real solution. Room center markers are not really a good solution because you're going to have the player always juggling this difference between their room space and their you know, virtual space. And that's not, like, it's not good ever. Are we down again? No, we shouldn't be down. OBS says I'm up. You mean the quest is pretty good? Yeah, it's pretty good. It's just, you know, the specs are lower than the index here and the tracking is not quite as good and stuff. And I always, for this kind of uh, experience, will um, will prefer the higher end experience until, like, if Oculus is hardware, I mean, it's weird because this cable is really annoying, right? It's already caused downtime for us. It's uncomfortable during play. So maybe if the lower end uh, wireless got high end enough, it would be worth taking the downgrade, right? Just to get rid of the wire. I imagine, I imagine that'll happen before too long. Like maybe that's even, maybe the next Valve HMD will be wireless. I don't know. I have no inside information on any of this. It beats hitting the room boundaries. Yeah, maybe. The room boundaries really are annoying. I'll say that. <sighs> yeah, I mean, Oculus tried to go for cheap and large volume, and they decided that people want to watch movies in VR, and I don't agree with any of that stuff. Like, it's... Like, cheap and large volume is the correct play to make billions and billions of dollars off this eventually. <laughs> eventually. But you have to make the technology better first. You have to make an experience that millions of people are going to want to buy, right? Tens of millions, hundreds of millions. You have to make that experience first, and then you can miniaturize the hardware, right? Oculus was thinking, oh, the experience of watching a 3D whale is already so great that all we have to do is make it cheap and ubiquitous. And I don't, I don't agree with that strategy. I don't think that's correct. Do I think VR is not suited for action or more slower pace? Can I think both kinds of games can work. You know, like Beat Saber can be pretty action-y. This game could be pretty action-y if it was designed a little bit differently. Um, you know, Space Pirate Trainer is pretty action-y. Those, those games all work. Oculus is all about social VR. Yeah, but that's like not, that's just not really an experience a lot of people want to have, right? It's like when, back when Second Life was a thing and everyone was like, oh my God, Second Life is the future. Everybody's going to have a Second Life character eventually. It's like, no, they're not. <laughs> no, that is not going to be a thing.
You wonder what kind of in-universe explanations you could come up with for a player being tethered to room size area within a larger world unless you teleport. I would do teleport. I, I described this in a previous stream. I, I think it, it's an obvious way to solve all the problems, and I haven't seen anyone do it, and I'm like, I don't, I don't get it. I don't get why nobody's done it. Is VR at its highest level, just Simon says? No. No, it isn't. No. Do I instinctually close my eyes when I teleport? I don't think so. I don't think so. Yeah, I kind of wish I had time to do a VR game because it would be fun to just put this shooter together. Like, dude, I could put a very basic version of this shooter together in like a weekend. It wouldn't have good graphics, right? Um, well, it would go faster if I already had, if I already had, okay, let's just say if I already had just a basic framework that rendered 3D to the HMD and tracked it and stuff, which is a, a straightforward interface with the SDKs, um, then you could even do it, I mean, almost in a day just the most basic, just enough to show the concept you could do. Like it wouldn't be a good game in a day probably, um, but it would be really fun, rapid progress. Like that kind of thing goes, like game design is really fun when it goes fast like that. Could totally create receiver in a week. Um, I don't, yeah, I guess so. I guess receiver didn't have that many different things in it exactly. It was just more about the execution on a small number of things. I don't remember though. It's been a long time. Just use a Unity or Unreal plugin. Well, that's not my style. I would rather do it in my own engine, you know. Um, but, you know, once you've got your own thing up and running for VR, it's fine. And you just do your things. Have I played Jet Island? Nope. Never even heard of it. Am I enjoying VR? Um, a little bit. Like, again, my, my frustration with VR is just that game designers are not doing the obvious correct designs. <laughs> and so, you know, they make these designs that have all these problems. Did I measure and set my IPD or go with what's least blurry? I went with what was least blurry, which was just the IPD slider slid all the way to the widest possible. Like I would like it to go a little bit wider, I think. Was the trailer that we were going to show off the game using the witness engine? Um, I cannot say what it was for yet. Um, 
you know, we, we just have to find a new way to announce it. It was going to announce pretty soon. <laughs> and now uh, we got to figure out something else. Please make a VR game. I, you know, it would be fun, but I just, I don't have time. What new game announcement? The one that, that we haven't, that we have to figure out how to do. Is VR more or less immersive than looking at a screen? Uh, I think it is less immersive exactly because of the things you're mentioning, because of getting tangled up on the cable, it being blurry when you try to look at stuff, the VR headset not and sitting directly on your head, not being able to move fast, bumping into the wall, all that stuff makes it less immersive. Um, now those things will improve as technology gets better. So, um, you know, that's okay. But this idea, people have this idea that VR is more immersive and I don't agree. Like watching a movie is very immersive on just a regular screen. Like your brain does that. You don't need a 3D effect to do that. Do I think VR design problems are a function of the design difficulty or design illiteracy? I, it's not either thing. I would say it more as design discipline, right? So there's a thing that I do that not that many designers do, which is I'll take the thing that I'm trying to solve or the thing I'm trying to optimize for and throw out all other things that you would assume are the ways that the game would work and then resubstitute in the things to build the appropriate structure around the, th the main thing, right? And so Braid was like that. It was like, okay, we're going to do this rewind thing. Let's get rid of almost everything from a platformer that you would do to make a platformer cool, like, you know, monsters with complicated behavior and tons of different kinds of objects and whatever. Get rid of all that, right? And then rebuild the thing, get rid of the fact that it's hard to get to the end of a level. Just make it so you could walk to the end of a level if you want, you know, whatever. And then rebuilt it around the thing. Witness was the same. I wanted to have, you know, these line based panel puzzles. Um, how do we do that? Well, get rid of almost everything from a puzzle adventure and build it around the, the panel puzzles, right? And so what you need to do in VR is like that, but it's like an ergonomic version of that. If you have to look at all these problems, right? Like getting tangled up in the cable, uh, always being at the room boundary, regardless of how big your room is, right? Um, all that kind of stuff. And you have to just take that very, very seriously, right? And start with that and say, what designs solve all these problems first? And then we build the game around that. And that's not what anybody ever does. Everybody just like makes a game more like a traditional game, but they adapt it somewhat for VR, sometimes more, sometimes less. It's not the right, you got to build it from the ground up. The only game that I've seen that was totally from the ground up for VR, well, there's sort of two, like Space Pirate Trainer is totally from the ground up for VR. And I forget what that game was, the one on from itch.io where you walk through the passageways. Those are the only two games I've seen that did the right thing design-wise. Out of every VR game that I've played. All right, I think we go back into the, the Half-Life, right?
VR has proven to be more immersive? No. I mean, it, like being able to f fall over. I don't think I've ever fallen over in VR due to thinking I'm in a different environment, but I definitely have moments where I'm like, oh, I'm going to try to step over this box that I think is there or something. But that's not, that's not really more immersive. It's just a little different. It's a different thing. Is it luck that the player character is just the right height? I cannot answer that question. Am I happy when I get praised for mainstream games media or do I not care since they mostly praise games that aren't very good? The second one, um, I mean, it's nice sometimes. Like sometimes if somebody really understands the game and their game press or something and they say they like it, that's good. But if somebody, I've read reviews of my games where it was clear they didn't really understand the games and they also said they like it. And I don't care about those either. Cause it's like, you did, I'm glad you liked it, but like, you don't really, uh, you know, you're not really getting it. So eh, <laughs> I don't know. I just, it, the only way to do serious work is to not worry about that stuff, especially as you mature and do more and more design. If you, if you stay in the area like that, where you're like pandering to a certain audience, even if that audience is the press or something, you're just going to restrict yourself from doing your best work, in my opinion. So um, I, I uh, try not to do that. They call that feeling presence rather than immersion. Yeah, yeah, presence. Presence is definitely a thing in VR, that is for sure. Did I watch Joseph Anderson's review of The Witness? No, I haven't watched any video reviews of the game. Is designing VR games harder than traditional games? I don't know. That's an interesting question. Um, I mean, it's definitely... Like in the sense that for traditional games, you have more good examples that you could just copy and modify, whereas for VR, that's not true, then maybe it's harder for that reason, but I'm not sure it's inherently harder. All right, let's, let's get back in the game. Let's get this out on a tray, if you know what I'm saying. One of my controllers went to sleep and the other one did not. And that's very weird. Why would only one controller go to sleep? Favorite Paul Thomas Anderson movie. I'm not sure. I haven't like really seen so many of his movies. Nonstop hip fire, dude, I have laser sights. Okay, my feet are way over here. Why is that glowing? Took a hit, damn it. Oh, this guy has a nade.
You know what? Now let's save the needs for when things get hairy. Oh god, the room! The room starring Tommy Wiseau. That hit me, man. I don't like the range at which those hit, the, at which those hit you. They seem like the radius is too big. That's what I get for using the sight. All right, let's stab it. Jab it and stab it. See, it wants to push me forward from here. Although this corner is fine. Okay, so I guess I'm not really in danger of the strider forward from here. Maybe if I'm over there I am. But here I'm fine. Where did that nade go? It got stuck on top? Wasting so much ammo here. Dude, of course I'm holding that. What are you thinking? More. 
this is boring when there's just one enemy, you know? So many of these. Dude, there's a health station right there. Alright. Oops. Didn't mean to do that. You know what? Oh, come on. Come on, game. Nades in this game. Okay, I thought that was going to be a big room, and it isn't. Dude, I'm in a wall. What is even happening here? So can you, I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die. Grab the thing. Okay, here's what we do. Stuck on the wall. Go, go. Fuck, dude. All right. What? You're hitting me through that. That's bullshit, dude. All right, rip. I don't know where to go. 
up that way, I guess. I don't have a lot of ammo in this gun. Ow, bro. Didn't I tell you not to tase me, bro? Shit, very bad. Where does it want me to go? Where does, where does the game want me to go? This is backward, right? No. This is forward. Scripted event means it's forward. How does this work? I see. Wait, what? Classic Half-Life, you lose all your weapons. This is like Half-Life 2, then now my gravity gloves are overloaded and super powerful.
okay, this is weird. But, I don't know, it doesn't look too dangerous. I probably shouldn't bother looting because I don't have weapons. The gravity gloves are definitely weird. Seventeen. So that's going to become a bridge over there at some point. Gravity is now sideways. As soon as I jump, now skull. So you walk onto it and it goes sideways. No, it's just, it's not actually sideways. It just looks sideways. Okay, we need, oh, it is. This is a dangerous area. Okay, dangerous, dangerous area. Was not even a scary head crab, whatever that was. All right. It's not scary for things to go through your body as they fall up. All right. There is no spoon. So I have two doors. This one and this one. Okay. All right. I mean, I like the I like the creation of a trippy space. I don't like the jump scares and stuff. It's like, oh, come on, guys. J 
Jump scares are not that respectable. Cool aesthetic trippiness is respectable, you know? They are getting set up. Hey, this is cool. See? Okay, see, this is cool. I want to go that way. But, you know. This is way cooler than jump scares. You know what's really cool, though? Having your nail go all the way into the wall. Floor is miscalibrated. Okay, it doesn't matter because I can grab these. I don't know why I'm looking in cupboards, except that the game trained me to do that for the entire game. I wonder if they're doing that with a portal or duplicated geometry. probably duplicated geometry because there's there's probably going to be a level where you like walk up there all right they do want me to walk up there they want me to God, dude. I am so tangled right now. I just want to get on the refrigerator. Is that so hard to ask? And then onto this. And then. Okay, it is duplicated. Maybe this isn't the right room to do this from? Maybe it is. That's cute right there. See, again, like... All the objects whipping through my body ruins the effect. Like, yeah. It just, it convinces me that I'm not in a real space, right? It's a cool idea though, generally. It's interesting that that's duplicated. Okay, I'm not supposed to go out that, even though everything went out that.
kind of don't know what it wants from me now. Oh, I can just go back down? Let me guess, I can go out this one, but not this one, because video games, right? Yeah. Video games. Yep, just like... Just like Half-Life 2, you get special gravity glove powers. Not sure how to open this door. Maybe this way? Eh. Oh, that one is not lit. Some of them are not lit. Does that mean I have to light all of them? No. Oh, maybe I just do... Just open the door. Hey, buddy. How's it going? I feel like this isn't supposed to be as anticlimactic as it currently feels. Okay, so the reds, the red lights are like getting dimmer when I do this. Somehow. For some reason. I give up. Next game. Like, why is it so inconsistent, first of all? Is it a don't cross the stream situation? Dear game, I want my awesome gravity glove powers, please.
Wait, what? Did I accidentally... Oh, it wants me to grab it like a grenade? What? That's extremely... What? Dude, don't expect someone to figure out novel controls. Ow. I still don't know how to freaking grab this. This is stupid. This is very clumsy. Alright. Like they wanted me to somehow know what that interactivity is. Okay, this is less cool than good gravity gloves. This is just lightning bolt. That's not cool. I wasn't trying to move, I was just trying to throw both of them at the guy because there was an arc between them. So I was like, oh dude, maybe I can do like this bolus thing where they both, and it teleported me. I guess I nudged the analog stick accidentally. Not what I was trying to do. Okay, so this is just the regular pickup UI and they expected me to understand that. I don't know why they expected me to understand that, but they did. Oh god. Right. What? Is that a hole? Or is that... No, I can't shoot through that. Oh. There's a grenade in the air. Alright. Go. So it's interesting, you do have to keep making forward progress or you run out of lightning bolts. Pick it up. God damn it, dude. Lost power. We've lost power, Captain. Oh. 
hell, man. Where'd it go? Like, why doesn't the guy just push me? I'd be dead. It's stupid. Where's the rest of those nades, dude? Fuck! That was no good. You know what's not immersive? Having a floating guy's leg go through your head. Really? He's just gonna stand there and take that? I get it. I got rid of all my things. They got rid of all my things. It's not Gordon. Impressive work, Ms. Vance. Gordon Freeman? Gordon Freeman. 
Miss Bats, you wouldn't need all that to imprison Gordon Freeman. So, who are you? Perhaps what I am is not as important as what I can offer you in exchange for coming all this way. Some believe the fate of our worlds is inflexible. My employers disagree. They authorize me to nudge things hmm, in a particular direction from time to time. What would you want nudged, Ms. Vance? The Combine off Earth. I want the Combine off Earth. Ah, that would be a considerably large nudge. Too large, given the interests of my employers. Well, you asked. What if I could offer you something you don't know you want? This hand is not even working. Did my controller die? I guess not, because it's tracking. Dad? What? Is that me? What is this? What's happening? We are in the future. This is the moment where you watch your father die. Unless... What? Unless what? Unless... You were to take matters into your own hands. Release your father, Miss Vance. I mean, the game's not giving me any choices here. So... Consequence of your action, this entity will continue, and this entity will not. Right. So he's okay, right? He lives. My dad lives. You are aware that you've proven yourself to be of extraordinary value. A previous hire has been unable or unwilling to perform the tasks laid before him. We have struggled to find a suitable replacement until now. No! I, I, I just want to go home. Send me home! I'm afraid you misunderstand the situation, Miss Lance. Wait! Hey, wait! 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 I mean, I guess that's an appropriate ending for the game, but it's literally adds nothing over the endings of the previous games. You think there's a post credits? All right. Post credits. I'll put the lotion on its skin until it
Uh, like anyone's gonna keep their headset on through more than they have to. Like what is even happening with my cable here? It's on this chair. Additional development, lots of people. Takes a lot of people to make a video game. Anytime you saw cubes, oh, WB Game Audio, I know them. She's gone, Gordon. She's gone. Son of a bitch and his unforeseen consequences. I knew it. When I get my hands on him, I'm gonna kill him. That's what you guys told me to put the headset on for? All right. Remember that whole thing you liked? Yeah. It's kind of what that was. I mean, it's kind of what the whole game was, though, right? That gum you like will soon be back in style. Yeah, Casey, I mean, how am I going to stream Bungie Destiny game when I have to stream Half-Life game? I mean, you know this. I mean, okay, so, I mean, of the games that Valve released lately, this is better than any of the other ones, right? This is better than Artifact. It's better than, what was the other one? It's better than Counter-Strike BR. <laughs> um, what was the third game that they released? I can't even, I can't even remember. Wasn't there another card game or something? Dota Underlords, that's the other one. It's better than those games. I mean, if your thesis is, if your thesis is we need to do Half-Life but in VR, then I guess this mostly works. I mean, I, I just wish there weren't as many crappy fake puzzles in the game, you know? Like they're so tedious and bad. And I wish, I wish that it started at a reasonable pace. Like, you know, what it feels like, especially from a couple of short exchanges with people I know who work at Valve, they were saying, well, you know, it's slow because, uh, 
you know, for a lot of people, it's supposed to be an introduction to VR for a lot of people. And um, a lot of people just get a lot of wow out of being in virtual reality. And I don't believe that thesis. It's weird how I'm kind of slurring my words after being in VR for a while. I said virtual reality. Um, so... So yeah, I mean it's this is a reasonable game. It's a it's a totally well executed game in many dimensions. Like the production value is obviously good. The tech is good pretty much. Um I mean good. I I don't know internally it's probably not good cuz I never liked the kind of decisions they make on engines, but um you know, what you see as a player is good. So that's nice. It's like, hey, they made a 3D game again like a first person 3D game and they they did all that and it's good. It's just the design, man. I you know, and design is the thing I care about the most. Um the good design in the game is the weapons, not even the weapon balance, but just the the weapon design of the pistol and the SMG is is pretty good. It's decent. Um Like monster design is, is there's not much new there, right? Um, scenario design, there's not much new there. There's weird half puzzles. Like what was with that pipe and the boards you raise up and down? Does someone want to tell me, was that just broken and you're supposed to do something different? Like, you know, that one with the big ass pipe and the levers and like, what the hell was that? Shotgun feels better with upgrades. I wasn't going to buy upgrades for it because they never give me ammo. Like, what's the point? I still ended the game with like, I was hoarding shotgun rounds and I ended the game with like 19 of them or something <laughs> or less. You get more ammo if you use it. Dude, for large parts of the beginning of the game, I had like zero to four rounds. So I'm sorry. You know, it, they broke, they broke it by a DDA. Someone's getting, someone's getting really into the plot of Half-Life here. The pipe was a red herring. No, because you had to move the pipe in order to raise the first wall up because it was blocking it. But apart from that, it just seemed like a lot of machinery for a very, very trivial puzzle. DDA just lets you know you didn't design a good game. I agree with Casey on this. However, there's an entire school of thought out there. If you go to lectures at the G period, D period, C period, the Game Developers Conference in all caps, they will tell you how good DDA is and how you need to use it. Yeah, like, I agree with exactly what Casey's saying. Like, don't use ammo as a construct if you have to DDA it, right? I would rather, like, hey, we've got this cool warp pouch where, like, new mags show up or in the backpack, there's just always a mag in there, and you still have the mechanics of reloading the mag, right? You just have a supply. Now, they would then have to give you something else to loot or search for in the environment, but the looting was already bad, so they already needed to do that. Um you know, uh, DDA stands for dynamic difficulty adjustment. The D in GDC stands for DDA. When is a good time for DDA? Never, never. You should not use it.
Would the sphere things be better as literally maze-like puzzles rather than those avoid the red things? I don't know. I mean, again, okay, so first of all, first of all, in order for those to be good, there had to be consequences, right? Consequences, right? If you get it wrong, you have to get sucked into a wormhole or, you know, get hit by a wrecking ball. Um, or, you know, like suppose if you get that wrong, the container that has the stuff inside either permanently locks or even just incinerates or something to be dramatic, then you'd have to like get it right. So then the next step is make it an interesting thing to get right or wrong, you know, and you could do, okay, you could do an ethical version of escalating difficulty that isn't DDA where everyone that you successfully unlock means the next one has a harder one, right? But if you fail, the next one is the same difficulty, right? So then, you know, as players get more resources from them, uh, you know, they get harder, but in like a reasonable way, a, f a fair way that you could even understand. Like you would want to tell the player that this was happening. I would like literally print something like, you know, difficulty seven, difficulty eight, so that you know you're advancing through levels. And then you just need to have the mini game be something good. And for it to be good in a game like this probably means at some level it should be integrated with the environment in some way. Um, I don't know what that would be. The uh, the trip mine defusal seems seems like you could have done all kinds of creative stuff with that that they didn't do. Um, might one time use DDA B1 automatically generating puzzles for something? No, I would always. I would always rather give players the choice of how much difficulty they have. So it, it's fine to provide difficulty adjustment as long as the player in some way adjusts the difficulty. That could even be a very natural way within gameplay. It could be walking into a particular room, right? Even Quake 1 had a simple version of that where like at the beginning of Quake 1, you walk down a hallway and which hallway you walk down chooses the difficulty of the game. You could have that dynamically, right? Um, Just like dynamically adjusting difficulty is condescending because the player doesn't get a, a choice. Some people want to beat their head against a brick wall really hard over and over until they succeed. And some people just want a smooth ride with no challenge. And those latter people will never amount to anything in life, but that's still what they want. So um, let them choose that. Like God's Hand difficulty levels. I never played uh, God Hand, so I don't know. Maybe Valve ran out of money. I don't think that happened. The follow the line thing, not following something, something, something in the environment is really bizarre to me. Yeah, like if you were actually tracing the walls in some way, and if you could have done things to set it up, I don't know. Just had Navi. That's a pretty intense comment. Oh, that won't amount to anything in life. I mean, it's sort of true though. Like the people who amount to something in life are the people who work hard. I mean, even, even at simple things, and I don't just mean like, you know, I don't just mean a job. It's like people who put effort into a relationship or people who put effort into being literate or something like those, you know. So people who put effort into playing games like Shroud isn't Shroud because he wants DDA to make his game easy. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm saying. Can we cancel all pipe puzzles from game design? Maybe, except the pipe puzzles were better than some of the other puzzles in that game. Like that one thing with the two-sided pipe puzzle was actually kind of okay. 
not everyone wants difficulty in all the games they play. No, and difficulty doesn't have to be. I've given entire lectures on this like 15 years ago, dude. Difficulty does not have to be the source of interest in games, but you have to have some source of interest, right? If difficulty, if you are claiming that the game is about doing things well, which a game where you aim is, is making that claim, then don't lie about it. Have it be real, right? If you have running out of ammo, have that be real. Don't have it be fake. Now, instead of that difficulty, you could have some other thing be the main source of interest, and I encourage that. That's good design to do that. But if you're going to do it, do it. Don't fake it. Half-Life was challenging in some ways in the past. Yes, definitely. Half-Life was pretty hard sometimes. You thought those broken tree branch puzzles in the red manor place in the witness were unfair. That's fine. You're willing, you know, go ahead and think that. <laughs> what about games that state up front that it DDAs? Is that less slimy? Well, maybe, but I don't want to play that game necessarily. So... But these are sweeping statements. Dude, I've been thinking about video games and game design for 38 years, and I've been a professional game designer for 24 years. If I'm not allowed to make statements that apply broadly, then who is? Who are you going to allow to make statements about games that are broad? What are the requirements? Tell me what the requirements are. Thought those branch puzzles were interesting. No, I designed I designed those branch puzzles. Most of them. Actually, all of them. Some people are triggered in chat today. Do you think that a tactics game where the enemy scales up its counteroffensive depends on how strongly you win engagements be a bad example of DDA? Um, it depends a lot on details. If the player understands that that is how the system works, and it works in a way that you can play, like you could sort of make choices about how much to win an engagement or not, depending on the outcome that you foresee, then that's interesting and probably isn't DDA, right? It's actual like gameplay. So there are ways to do things, there are ways to do ramping difficulty that are not DDA in that sense, yes. And you can make them good. Dude, dude, I've been streaming VR for hours. Can, can you just not let, like, let people say things. Let people make mildly flippant comments. Like, the, the worst thing about the internet is all the things like Twitter where you say anything at all that's even, like, halfway joking and people go, nah, 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 you can't say that. Like, dude, don't do that. All right? We're just hanging out here. Of course I'm not judging thoroughly 
a certain portion of the world's population. That said, I do think there is some truth to what I said. So <laughs> deal with it. All right, I'm now doing the thing where I'm arguing with one person out of the 200 people in the channel, so I'm going to stop doing that. Yeah, you know, a lot of people said God Hand is a good game. I just never really played it. I think because I just, I don't usually play fighting games. I don't like them that much. You know, everyone has kinds of games they like more and kinds they like less. And fighting games have never been my thing. Yeah, I mean, okay. I think if you're honest about DDA and build it into the structure of things, it isn't DDA anymore. Like, look, um, old style 1980s arcade games have adjusting difficulty, right? As you play the levels, you win each level and it, the next level is harder. That's not really DDA because you know it's not really DDA because people had to invent the term DDA later on historically for something different than that. But yes, the game is adjusting its difficulty in response to what you do, but that's not dynamic difficulty adjustment. You know, the, the term means something different. Casey was a Mortal Kombat 1 aficionado. Mm. Yeah, I never really played that one or any of them. I mean, I probably played a few games of them in the arcade at one point, but never was my thing. And Alex, specifically, you don't think it's an outright lie? I think it's an outright lie. Because the game is telling you, you know, that like ammo is a scarce resource and whatever. That's a lie. Anyway, I don't want to talk any more about DDR. I definitely have entire lectures where I rant about this. The most recent one being the 2017 one in Prague. So you can go watch that if you want to know more about how I feel about that. Um, it would be impossible for them to tell which weapon you like shooting a lot and what ammo to put in the level. Okay, but the solution to that is to do it differently, right? So for example, Prey, now I don't think the, in the new Prey, not the old Prey, I don't think their uh, like nano fabrication system in that game was very good, but you definitely could do this thing where you gather a resource and you craft it at the station into whatever ammo you want with the nano machine, right? Like that's totally fine and not DDA. Casey says, when will there be a good multiplayer game? Um, um, next question. Do you think they'll make another Half-Life VR game? I have no insight into Valve's decision process. I cannot say anything about it. I have no idea. Did I say DDR instead of DDA? Oops. Same thing, DDR, DDA, whatever. Alternatively, you can have universal ammo for all guns. Yeah, you could do that. Is this the best VR game? Um, I think Beat Saber or Space Pirate Trainer are better than this in the sense of, 
in the sense of being well crafted without like in the sense of being designed for the medium and having the experience have minimized fumbling, right? This game has so much fumbling. When will we send out a notice to all our customers describing the steps we we're taking about COVID-19? That is a good question. We'll get right on that. I should just copy all the emails that I got on that together or maybe I'll just train a neural network on all the emails that I got and have it generate one every day. Am I excited for ray tracing at all? Maybe. I mean, I think ray tracing will simplify a lot of the ugly technical implementation details that we have in graphics. Uh, maybe. But then again, the other part of me just thinks that we'll just make it more complicated again as soon as we do that. So then maybe there's no way to win. What is the point of having multiple weapons in this game? They all essentially cover the same situations. Not really. I mean, the way it works in this game is pistol is long range, SMG is medium range, and shotgun is short range. Um, so it's a little weird to have your pistol be your long range weapon in a game, but that's okay. I did not find the gorilla. If there is a gorilla in the game, then no good. Let's see how many hidden achievements we didn't get. Probably a lot. Some of them were pretty dumb though. Consequences. Last time I played Consequences, we got banned. Or not quite banned, but muted. So we can't go play Consequences. If I were to ship a game as a new indie today, would I ship it on Steam or another platform? I would ship it on as many platforms as I could manage without um, damaging the... Uh, I just realized you guys are looking at this VR the whole time. Um, as many platforms as I could manage without uh, impairing the quality of the game. think the 90% of the pistols in FPS games have their first shot be exactly at the center so pistols are now long range weapons that's weird that's not how real guns work do I think the gameplay of Alex could have been made a little faster definitely yes consequences what if EGS gave me a million bucks to ship nowhere else? That is not enough money for that. We would lose money on that deal by a lot. It would have to be way more than a million dollars. And even then, it would have to be time limited because... You know, when I make games, I make them for people to play and I want them to live into the future and for people who are maybe too young to play this game today to be able to play it later, as long as it's still relevant, right? And we try to make them relevant. And so tying a game to one platform forever means that it will die when that platform dies. I think it's dangerous for games to not represent firearms realistically. No. No. I mean, dude, I played a lot of video games that don't have realistic anything. But as soon as you get a real AR-15 and start using it, it's like totally different. 
and you learn how to use it and your body understands how to use it and it's fine. I mean, as long as, as long as your brain's okay. <laughs> Apple is doing their best to ensure nobody ports to Mac anymore. That is true. How many decibels would they have to pay for five years exclusivity? I don't even know because I don't know how big decibels are, especially decibels of money. Yeah, it's true. I mean, you notice, I mean, my my little playing the game was in the corner here, but, um, you know, you'll notice when I was using pistols and peeking around corners, I was like one handing a lot or like had a kinked wrist to like aim the pistol. You don't shoot a firearm that way in real life. You'll hurt yourself. Right. But it's VR. So. I don't know. That's a little bit closer, I guess like a, an actual pistol than a rifle, but um, I don't, I don't feel like it's dangerous. At least minus eight decibels. Yeah. Do I think VR needs some sort of more realistic physical feedback to take it to the next level? No, I think it needs better design to take it to the next level. That's all. With current technology, you could easily have much better games and people just don't make them. How many decibels is zero volume? I guess that's like minus infinity. I don't even know. Well, everybody, thank you for coming by. I think I'm going to um, stop the stream. We have played all the way through Half Life colon A L upside down Lambda X. Oh, look, Steam crashed. I can't look at my achievements. Quality storefront, everybody. Yeah, Casey doesn't like VR. I I like VR in principle. But man, people are dragging their ass on making good games for it. Thanks everybody for coming by and uh, maybe we'll play some other video games soon that are not VR. <laughs>